Now we have Anthony Caputa, Senior Quality Advisor, USPTO. You can tell I'm not an engineer. I'm more of a scientist. I don't know how to use these microphones. <laughs> so just a little background. Um, before I started working for the USPTO about 25 years ago, I worked as a scientist. I worked for a pharmaceutical company called Letterly. And what I did was I worked on vaccines for whooping cough. Before that, and what got me interested in the um, IP area was I worked on a vaccine for Lyme disease. And it turned out I was an inventor for a patent application, which eventually became a patent. And I got a uh, patent out, out there for a diagnostic kit and vaccine for Lyme disease. So that's just a little background. But I wanted to thank you all for having the opportunity to speak here. It's a really great honor, so I appreciate it. Um, today what I'm going to cover is three areas, and this is more with respect to the USPTO. I'm going to carry, uh, discuss the pendency of application. What I mean by that is the timeliness. Second, I'm going to cover the quality initiatives we've been doing at the USPTO. And then also the international patent programs we're doing. So the USPTO remains dedicated carrying out its core mission, which is issuing the highest quality pat patents as quickly and efficiency, efficiently as possible. As a result of carrying out our core mission, the USPTO has reduced our backlog of unexamined patent applications by almost 30% from its peak in January 2009, despite a 32% increase in applications over this time. We brought down our first action pendency by 43% from 28 months in 2011 to 16 months today. Our total pendency is down by 26% from 35 months in 2010 to 26 months currently. We were able to achieve this even though our utility plan reissue filings increased more than 5% in fiscal year 2016 to over 650,000 applications. In regards to our PCT applications, the USPTO continues to lead the world in the number of PCT applications filed in the receiving office. In 2015, the USPTO received over 57,000 PCT, PCT applications, which accounted for approximately 26% of such applications filed worldwide. In the last several years, the USPTO has made great strides in reducing the pendency times for processing PCT applications, both as a receiving office and as an international search authority. Our shrinking backlog along with greater finances at the USPTO, and, an, and also the strong support from the public, has allowed the agency to engage in an ex exceptional effort to enhance patent quality. And I think I talked to a couple people even before, and some people have mentioned how we're actually improving in our quality, so I really thank you for giving us that feedback. Some of our recent efforts have focused on working to improve our methods for measuring quality. We've had quality metrics in place since at least 1983, but we are now uh, continuing to identify new measures so that we can get a more thorough understanding of our work product and processes. So what we're doing with respect to our quality metrics, we have three buckets, I would call them. We have our product indicators, our process indicators, and our perception surveys. I'm sorry, per, our perception indicators. So with reg regards to the product indicators, two years ago we started a new form called the master review form, which allows us to have a more uniform way of actually reviewing applications and recording them in terms of quality. What we're looking at in this master review form is two areas, the correctness and clarity. With regards to correctness, what I mean by that is we're looking at are the examiners making the proper patentability calls and then are they actually um, also, is there a situation perhaps where they're missing rejections? And this is something we've actually looked at before but the new emphasis we're looking at is called the clarity. And what I mean by that is we're looking to see are the examiners making clear the record in terms of how they're interpreting the claims. So for instance, we're asking um, the examiners to essentially, if there's a situation where it's not clear where in the reference that um, claim limitation is, if they can actually pinpoint where it is located. Also, to contain clear suggestions to overcome the rejections if it's possible. So again, we're emphasizing not only the correctness, but the clarity. The other thing we're actually doing is we're increasing the number of reviews we've done, we're doing. 
Um, this year, we're doing 18, we're reviewing 18,000 applications. And just to give you a sort of idea of how, how that's a big increase, the year before, we, want, we were at 12,000. And prior to that, I think we're at a, a situation of uh, 6,000. So you can see that we're increasing the amount of cases. You might ask, why are we increasing these number of cases? Well, before, when we only had 6,000 cases, we could only look at the quality on a perspective of the core for correctness. Now, with reviewing 18,000, we can look at the groups called the Technology Center as well as the work group. And what I mean by that is a Technology Center is essentially a group of examiners, either the chemical, mechanical, or electrical, which covers about 1,000 examiners. So now, with the reviewing 18,000, we can get data on a technology center. We can also do it on a work group level, which is only 80 to 100 examiners. So we can get much more granular into what we can look at. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention, this is in regards to the process indicators. What we're doing now is the technology centers themselves have performed a root cause analysis involving the work of a, over 1,000 examiners. And what we found is they may rip causes of the negative performance in terms of when they were actually looking at these cases were to identify to be improper claim interpretation or failure to identify and apply the most appropriate prior art. But then we also looked at the best practices in which they found. And what we're looking at is the best practices that we identified were searching both the claimed invention and the inventive concept, and then also identifying allowable subject matter early in prosecution. The technology centers are currently planning to conduct training for the examiners who are found to need help and develop further training based upon the identified root causes and best practices. The last thing I want to mention is our perception indicators where we're having two types of surveys. We have an internal survey which goes to the examiners twice a year and then we also have it to the external stakeholders. And with this, we um, ask that three, over about 3,000 frequent flyer customers to actually fill out an external survey. And why do we do this? It, it validates and verifies the other measures that we're actually looking at. So we want to make sure that what we're looking in terms of the product indicators are in sync in terms of what our external stakeholders are saying. So that's the purpose of that. The last thing I want to talk about is our international programs. So where we're making, the first one I want to talk about is the uh, Global Cooperative Patent Classification. We're making sure of a transition in terms of going from our decades old antiquated U.S. classification system to the updated increasingly global uh, cooperative patent classification. The CPC provides a comprehensive search result set that includes national documents from China and Korea, as well as several other countries that are classifying their national documents into the CPC documents that were not previously available for viewing or retrieval under the U.S. the old classification system. We intend to keep the quality of these documents at a high level by helping more countries classify their national documents to the CPC, and we will continue to work with the EPO to perform an ongoing number of CPC revision projects. The USPTO has made an investment of use of the tool as Global Dossier, an online portal developed in conjunction with our IP5 partners that provides all examiners and the public access to file history information to all applications that may be filed in an IP5 office. The Global Dossier improves patent quality worldwide because both the examiners and the public can access the prior art. The other thing I want to talk about is a couple of other work sharing programs that we're doing. There's two of them I just want to mention quickly. One is the Patent Prosecution Highway, or PPH, which allows applicants fast-track examination of corresponding claims at a second office with a streamlined examination process. Um, because here, the examiner at the second office can use the work done by the other office, reducing any duplication of effort. The other work sharing program I want to mention is our collaborative search program that we have with Japan and Korea. The collaborative search program provides stakeholders with search results early in the examination. Needless to say, we are very busy at the USPTO, and I hope that this update 
has given you a glimpse at some of the progress we have made on some of our important priorities. I look forward for today and tomorrow's very informative discussions. Thank you, Alison. I would like to thank our keynote speakers for the wonderful words. And now I would request Azam to present the memento to our speakers.